Alright, so this is uh, my next installment of my tutorials for Fire Alpaca. This is by far going to be my longest one right now. Um, today I'll be working with uh, coloring techniques as well as some layering things. So without further ado, let's get started with layers. Um, this is my usual layer format. Um, this is what I start with. Very normal. There's a lot of stuff you can uh, play around with here. I gotta work on a few things with this myself, like the blending. I'll make a tutorial on that soon enough. I kind of know what it is. Um, so anyway, let's look at the bottom portion here, which is um, new layer, copy layer, uh, merge layer down, and delete layer. Uh, that, those were in order. Easy enough to figure out. New layer, just click on it, you'll get a new layer, which is what I'm going to do for this layer here. Uh, this is a sketch on layer 2. Um, very simple sketch. Uh, from here I have a layer in the background because I'm paranoid about that. Um, so again, here are the layers. Uh, layer 1's in my background because I like it better that way. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I got it from GIMP. Um, anyway, with this you can also play with the opacity. I have it at 35% so I can draw over it again. Um, the opacity does not, it does change the entire layer, but it is not permanent. You can continuously play with it for a while. For example, it's much brighter now and I have a third layer on here now uh, for my line art. Uh, Nothing really interesting there. The line art is on a separate layer than my sketch. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, a little bit of explanation for layers though. There is a way you can rename them. Personally, I don't. Um, you double click on them, I think. Um, I find it much easier to right click on a layer. It'll give you an option to change its name. And that's what you do. You change its name so you can you don't always get confused with your layers. I keep it layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. And next to the layers, to the left, are the visibility. With the visibility, you're able to supposedly get rid of a layer without deleting it. Uh, it becomes invisible. Yay. Anyway, on to uh, color. Uh, color is very fun. You get to play with a lot of different colors and a lot of different tools with colors. No, this isn't what I'm going to be using throughout the whole video. I'm not using red. Yay. Uh, first tool is the pen tool, a, I don't know what to call it, blotchy tool. I don't know. I use it a lot for um, coloring, not so much for shading. I don't use it for shading anymore. Uh, pen tool acts like a pen. It's Single opacity throughout the whole thing, very easy to use. I use it for a lot of filling stuff, especially when I start. Oh, and line art. I use it for line art. The next thing on our list is pencil. Uh, pencil does work with the um, pressure of your pen, as you can see on my scribble. Uh, the pencil can change in its opacity, transparency, whatever you're going to call it. Um, very easy. I don't use it too often, actually. Kind of regret it now that I've played with it a little, <laughs> but I don't use it. The next one is our airbrush. I use a lot of airbrushing for my sketches. I know how to use it for a lot of shading. I don't use it for a lot of shading. I prefer the sketches with this. Um, th it makes a lot of very nice details, though. It's a lot of fun once you get into it. Oh, got to wait for watercolor to show up. I don't start explaining it now. So watercolor as our last tool. I use this for shading more often than not, as well as coloring. Watercolor is one of the only tools that I have found that will blend with itself. If As long as it's on the same layer, the watercolor will blend with itself, as you can kind of see here. It works with pressure, with how much it blends, and how much it doesn't blend. This is my main shading tool. Uh, eventually, here and there, there's details, and I love using it for backgrounds. Uh, wonderful tool. Anyway, 
So this is what I've done with my pen tool, which is my line art and my uh, basic coloring. I use a base color. Bad habit or good habit, I don't know. But I use a base color. That's a lot easier for me to understand and color off of, actually. I know a lot of people don't do it because it's an extra layer to use, but I much prefer it. I don't know why. And I don't know why I always make it different from the actual color that it should be the base. Um, here's our tool list. Um, for coloring, I will suggest to use this magic wand tool. It is highlighted on this picture. Yay for highlight. Anyway, uh, magic wand uh, to select more than one areas, you use the shift key and then you click. It will not get rid of your first selection and you'll have another. Uh, the other way to do it is, I believe, control and that is a negative select. So with that, I have selected around my line art, not in it, around it. Um, this has no editing done to it other than maybe that shift button for in between the two front legs. So. And I just clicked around, pressed the shift button, clicked in between the two legs, and now we have this. The unhighlight, the highlighted part is not selected, everything highlighted, or not highlighted is. Anyway, uh, to the selection, so you can edit it, there's a lot of options here. I'm going to be using expand. Um, yeah, expand. Because, well, with the fuzzy select or selection wand, you don't always get it straight against the line and you have to go through and erase everything. So with expand you have your choice of how many pixels you want to expand it in by. I usually use one because I use thinner lines. Depending on how thick your lines are, you're going to use a thicker, no, you're going to use more pixels to expand in. Then I just press the OK button and well then this happens because I brought back my other layer and as you can see on the picture itself it says press delete. When you press the delete button, all of the stuff that has been selected will uh, be deleted off of that layer. It's a lot easier than going through with your eraser tool. It gets rid of everything. So this is what happens. Uh, the inside is still all colored and because of that, I now have my base coloring, which is going to make personally my coloring a lot easier. However, this selection is not perfect still. This has to be one of the most tedious parts of coloring through the style I use. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of little areas in between the furs that still have color that I don't want. Um, this, you just use your eraser tool, get into all the little nooks and crannies. Tedious work, yeah. Will I find a way around it? Eventually, maybe. Until then, it's not that bad. It's short. It doesn't take too long. And as you can see here, it does look a lot better when I do it. So I'll just keep it around for a while. Um, I did this to the whole image. I'm just showing you the portion that I showed you before to show you the difference. Yes, it means going around the entire line art and going through every little bit and erasing stuff and adding color and erasing color. And it just gets annoying. So after this, I tend to come on. Okay, take away the line art. As you can see in my layer three, the line art is gone. It is not gone, gone. It's still there. I just have it invisible right now. Um, from this, I will use my fuzzy select tool again. I I don't do anything to it after this. I do not expand it or contrast or anything. I simply click on the inside of the blue and um, I get the whole image. Why do I do this? Well, because the it will select off of the entire canvas. Selecting off the entire canvas can be troublesome, annoying, and all that fun stuff. I don't like selecting off of the layer because sometimes this program doesn't quite understand what, which layer you're talking about and will select multiple layers or only part of one layer. Anyway, back to coloring. Um, the tool selected here is the very top tool. It's a fill tool, not to be confused with the bucket fill tool. The bucket fill, fill tool is stuck to every visible layer that you see. This fill tool on top is can be changed in shape. I'm going to use squares. Um, and it does not conform to anything but a selection, which is nice. 
and it's shown here with a bright blue. Um, I simply just selected the area I would like to color bright blue with this lovely little uh, selection thing, and from there uh, it colors. Anyway, I was just using that as an example. I am not actually coloring the same bright blue. Anyway, on to shading. As I said, I do love to use watercolor, so there's my little watercolor thing. Um, no, let's just wait till it gets to the image that I'm waiting for. Okay, uh, I'm using dark blue. Anyway, watercolor is a lot cleaner than a few of the other colors that you can, or colors, uh, tools that you can use for shading. It has very clean lines, and again, it mixes with itself, so if you want a darker color on the inside of it, it, it shades with itself. You don't have to blur. Anyway, on to airbrush. <laughs> that went fast. Airbrush is a wider tool. It um, does require a lot of inside editing and erasing, unless you like the kind of messiest style that it will give you, or if you get really good with airbrush. I used to use airbrush a lot on GIMP. So, this is what my airbrush looks like. It was very quickly done. It doesn't look bad, but I would still want to go through and erase a few little things from the edges that I don't like. Um, the airbrush tool just spreads like an airbrush. Anyway, pencil tool, again, conforms to your uh, pressure. This is really, in this video, the first time I really played with pencil tool and shading. I actually kind of like the outcome. I might use it later on. <laughs> Thank you for requesting this. Anyway, this is what the pencil tool looks like. Again, this was very fast. But again, it makes a very, very interesting shading style. And yeah, I'm probably going to play with it a little. Um, you layer it on and it just gets darker. Anyway, on to another form of shading. There's gonna, I'm going to be using the bottom tool. I forgot what it's called. I'm sorry. But this bottom tool is useful in a gradual shading that you aren't going to do with anything else unless you use a bunch of Gaussian blur. Anyway, you have a few options here, which is the shape and the type. Uh, I'll be going through these individually. I, um, these are, this is just what it starts out with. That's what I meant. And we, with it starting out like this, this is its default. Yay for default. So the first thing is the shape, and you can either have linear or circular. Linear is just a straight line. Circular, you get a circle. I tend to use linear more often. I, I don't know why. <laughs> use circles for everything else. <laughs> the other one is foreground, background versus your foreground with um, what color you're going to use. Foreground to background, you're going to get a solid color. With just foreground, you're going to fade into transparency, which is what you're going to see in this next image. And this is linear again. It will fade into the neck, into the transparency of the image because I used only our foreground. Um, oh, in the final image, you're going to see foreground, background, and my background. Um, other than that, yeah, I came from one end. I was trying to get a cool picture, but I didn't get it. Um, so on to what I will show you, which is how far you can push it. If you drag from one corner to the other corner, it's going to be a very gradual, very slow, um, what's it called? Fade into the image, or out of the image, rather. Um, that can be nice for some pictures, or if you get closer, which will be exposed in the next image. Come on. Okay. Or if your line isn't as long, it'll fade from color to transparency a lot quicker. can make for a lot of very dramatic, um, what's it called? Lighting. Uh, if you look at my, uh, what's it called? Selection. Selection video, you can see what you can do with that. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, again, I'm going to select the inside, of, or the color of this image. I'm going to do something a little different here because I'll be getting rid of all the color around it. Why didn't I click around the color? I did not want to go through and erase everything again. So I'm going to show you a very quick way to get rid of color around your image. Which is you go back to your select tool or your select option uh, next to file, whatever. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to 
uh, click inverse and after you click inverse everything outside of what you selected so you select the one thing like I selected the color I click inverse it'll select everything around the color except the color I press the delete button and I come up with something like this um, and again this is my final image in the background you can see foreground to background uh, coloring uh, you can see my watercolor used a lot I love my watercolor and you can see that I deleted the um, coloring. But uh, thank you for sitting through this video, and I hope this was uh, some sort of help to those of you who are having colors, uh, color and layer issues.